Welcome everyone to evening prayer. I was listening to that song earlier today and it just brought so much peace. Um, before we begin, I'd like to ask if there are any prayer requests, any people or places or situations that we should hold before God tonight. Yes, Pastor, this is Lisa. Hi, Lisa. I heard from, I heard, hi, I heard from Alicia this morning, and um, both her aunt and uncle, um, her uncle Louie and her auntie Franny have um, contracted the, the illness, okay. this virus, and her aunt is in the hospital. Um, mm -hmm. So we'd like to hold them up in prayer. Absolutely, Louie and Connie, okay. Anyone else? And my friend Greg. Greg. He yep. He's the one that has the cancer, and he's starting this week to do chemo and radiation at the same time. So he's going into Boston every single day, and just mm -hmm. in that um, he doesn't catch the virus. Yeah. He's in such yeah. a good condition right now. Thank you. Okay. All the healthcare workers. And first responders and all those who are coming in contact. Yes. Store clerks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's take a minute to quiet our heart. Well, if you're on the uh, Computer, you'll be able to see the words and music. If you're on the phone, you'll just be able to hear, but that's fine. We're all joined together in prayer. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can us now for it is evening and the day is almost over let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here Joyous light of heavenly glory, 
God be with you all. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would someone like to read from another one of the Lament Psalms. This is Psalm 130. On the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should make iniquities, Lord, who could stand? There is forgiveness with you, but you might, you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord. More than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who redeemed Israel, law its iniquities. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, be Thank, you, God. Thank, you. Thank you, Perry. Yes.
as we were discussing the lament psalms just in the in the bible study earlier i was talking about how important it is that all of us as god's people feel the permission to pour out exactly what we're feeling to god at all times that the psalms which we sometimes call the first prayer book of god's people it's not a whole book of praise and, and worship. It's not a book all of thank you God for creating this great world and all the blessings and it, thank you for my life and thank you for my family. That's all there too. But there are these psalms of lament that say this is hard. I need you. My heart is breaking. The world is not as it should, as it should be. People are dying. I have sinned. And during this time we're living in right now, we are, I think, especially needful of that permission to be able to name before God not only our blessings, but also our sadness, our hurt, our anxiety, our frustration even. The first line in that psalm, out of the depths I cry to you, O God, Lord, hear my voice. You almost imagine yourself at the bottom of a pit reaching up for help. I wonder if anyone would want to share what is it that what do those depths feel like for you right now? What is it that you are crying out for more than anything else right now? Just for things to go back to normal. Mm -hmm. Amen. For the healing of all of those who are sick. Mm -hmm. To hear on the news that things are really getting better. You long to hear that, yes. <laughs> well, I've always said that if anything bad comes good, so that's the resurrection. Mm. And the deaths will always be over Amen. Amen. I had CNN on at lunchtime and they were, they were interviewing this doctor who said that these days it feels to him like it may have felt for the firefighters who went into the buildings on 9-11 that he had played. And, and it, there was just this deep sadness that I just felt in my body that I know that I couldn't do anything to help him necessarily, I, but just to sort of lift up and unite that to the sacrifice of Jesus, to say that you understand this, God, you have been there. There's nothing else for us to do other than to just say it out loud and give it to you. And maybe that's all we can do sometimes. Um, in that Psalm, um, it talks about waiting for the Lord more than what those who watch for the morning. We are in a, a season of waiting right now. And it's especially hard because we don't know quite when it's going to end. I think a lot of people can do something if, if you say, okay, um, one month from now, life will go back to normal. Then we all hunker down and we count down the, all the seasons, like Lent is 40 days, Advent ends with Christmas. All of our seasons of fasting in the church sort of have a, a definable end. But this, it keeps getting kind of moved. The bar keeps moving. It's hard to wait for something when you don't know what you're waiting for necessarily or when it will come. And so just to give ourselves a little bit of grace and to say this, this is difficult and um, that God is with us in this waiting. And this is sort of like Jesus being tempted in the wilderness that, um, it lasted 40 days, but I'm not sure he knew that at the beginning. And he needed to rely all the more on the presence of God um, in his life and to know that no one who waits for the Lord ever waits in vain. And that's sort of what you were saying, Perry, that we know that, that however deep the depths, um, our lives are now are part of Jesus' story. And death, death of all kinds, death of normalcy, uh, death, even physical death, um, will not be the end, but 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 this this too will move towards resurrection, and we will be restored. 
and hopefully the people we will be on the other end will be better people people more reliant on god and more aware of all the good in the world when this is over well i'm thankful i was because I, I meditate so much now in my life that could you imagine days of old century gone by the men and women wish they had what we had right now and their sorrow and their grief, mm -hmm. not knowing what's going to happen, communication is lost. We have this mm -hmm. is a connection. And to me, I don't know about everybody else in this picture or anywhere on the planet, but just this alone, to be able to connect for even a little while, they did not have this. And I don't know about everybody else, but I don't know. I wouldn't want to walk in the desert for 40 years. I'll tell you that right now. This is true, that we are blessed to have um, the ability to connect, at least in this way, which is a real connection. It's not an in-person connection, but, it's, but it is, is something. And um, it creates a hunger in us again for the real, for, for the face-to-face -face kind of connection that we'll have again eventually. Let's turn now to God in prayer. We'll sing our, our, our Lenten canticle and then we'll move into our intercessions and we'll lift up those people and places that all of you brought at the beginning of our service. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Gather us, O God, around the cross of Christ and make it for us the tree of life. May the fruits of this tree feed the hungry and may its leaves heal the nations.
Eternal God, our healer, we lift before you those whom we know who are in need of your care this night, especially we pray for Louis and Franny, Alicia's aunt and uncle, who have contracted the coronavirus. We pray that they, together with all who are afflicted with this disease, would know your healing and protection. May the doctors and nurses who minister to them be your hands of healing, your ministers of compassion. Sustain all who provide this life-saving care with strength and endurance and a knowledge that you are with them at all times and in every way. Give them rest from their labors, give them a sense of purpose and meaning and keep them safe. We pray for Greg as he undergoes treatment for cancer, both chemotherapy and radiation, that you would calm his anxiety and be with him during this difficult time when already so much is in question. Hide him under the shadow of your wings. In addition to healthcare workers, we pray for all first responders, for store clerks, for those who work in homelessness and feeding ministries, and all those whose work is deemed essential and are away from home. We pray that they would have the resources they need to be safe and to do their work and to know that in the midst of all of this turmoil, a sense of your abiding peace. And we bring before you now all those cares and concerns in the silence of our hearts. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will, will be done, on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks for you. May God create.
May God's peace be with all of you, and may you have a quiet night and a peaceful rest. Peace be with you also. Thank you.